What's up, YouTube? It's Josh Creates, man. I'm back for another video, and I'm back from my vacation. It was well worth it. I will do another video on that, but it will most likely be a voiceover since it will be so loud and so windy of a video. And uh, yeah, I'll do that voiceover. But without further ado, man, we have TikTok vents about the truth about money, man. Like, and how it keeps us in this loophole of stress and anxiety. Especially not knowing what you're going to have at the end of the month, man. And how these bills just pop up on you out of nowhere. So without further ado, let's get right into it. In this economy, you really got to have two jobs and one side hustle in order to actually maintain some type of life. You got the light bill, the gas bill, the water bill, the home insurance, the car insurance, the car note, all these type of bills. And then, of course, you know, you need some groceries for your goddamn house, but the groceries are already high as fuck. And then, too, if you're trying to save money and go and get, like, something from, like, the dollar menu, which is not a dollar menu anymore, or something that's less expensive, it's still going to cost you a good almost $20. Then we got to talk about how gas just continued just to increase because like, you know, one minute we good, you know, the gas is good. Then now, you know, we in the three dollars again. Like, what the fuck? We better not go towards four dollars by the time the summer come. We want to do all the stuff like to have fun in the life to where we're not just so stretched out. Like we want to go to concerts. We want to take trips. We want to go to the mall and get some new stuff, get some new clothes, some shoes, some cologne. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we want in order to sustain some sort of life to where we're not so stressed out all the time. How the hell are we going to do that with just one job? One job ain't going to get you all that. One job is not going to make your ass stress free like that's like your ass gonna be sitting on the couch looking at the bills rubbing your head trying to figure out well how the fuck am i gonna pay this next bill two jobs one side hustle hell sometimes you gotta do two side hustles and that's uber doordash you might need to add in instacart you might need to add in favor and you gotta do some kind of i don't know you gotta do something to where that's gonna allow you to bring in some clean money so you can pay everything that you possibly need in order to live and then you gotta find extra money in order for you to have some type of normal balance for your life what can we do about this it's fine. Like, you know what? We, it's all good. We're, we're, we're going to figure it out. Like, we're going to figure it out. I just, you know, uh, the fact that I'm the new adult now, never, yeah, you know, you don't think about this shit when you're a teenager. Now, whoo. You ever been so broke? You ever been so broke? You, you're, not, you're not even sad about it no more? Like, you just like, okay. I ain't got no money. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna eat. I don't know how I'm gonna pay for gas. I don't know how. I, and I literally have a trip. I have a trip in a few months in December. Huh? I have. An, I'm unemployed. I'm unemployed students. I don't know how I'm gonna pay for anything. I have no money. I have. I, hmm. Hmm. But guess what? But guess what? It's gonna work out. Ain't got good, it's gonna work out. So I always see moms all the time talk about how they need more time, they need more hours in a day to get the things that they need done, done. And just pretty much how there is not enough time in the day for us mommies. Well, I'm here to say there's not enough money, okay? I need more money for all these damn kids. Like birthdays are coming up, holidays are coming up, all these different holidays and summer times coming up. Like I need more money, okay you guys? Like I am so tired of living paycheck to paycheck, just never feeling like I'm getting ahead. Don't get me wrong, we are so blessed and so grateful and just very appreciative of the life that we live. We have a very blessed life. But man, is this inflation getting out of control, you guys? And I always hear people have such a bad like association of, with money and just like this negative light. Money isn't everything. Money can't buy happiness, blah, blah, blah. But all that is true, right? Like you want the quality time. You want to create memories. But you can't create memories without money. Like money is an exchange of energy at the end of the day. Like if you want to go out and have a family trip to Disney or the Bahamas or whatever the case, that costs money, okay? Like, yes, you want to create these memories with your family. Take your kids here, do this, uh, experience um, hayaking or jet skiing or whatever. But all of that is money, honey. 
And the more kids you have, the more you're spending. So I look at money like an exchange of energy, okay? I always just genuinely feel like I attract money. I am a money magnet. And I truly believe what I give out, I will also receive. So instead of looking at money as such a bad thing, you guys, let's start changing changing our perspective on money and how we look at it because at the end of the day like money is always going to be in the equation and nowadays there are so many ways that we can make money whether it's online through digital products partnering with the com company becoming an affiliate creating content online like there is something out here for everyone we can all be winning so start changing how you think, start changing how you speak to yourself, start creating money affirmations and watch you receive the life that you are wanting. Money doesn't buy happiness. Money isn't everything. Money isn't going to fix all of your problems. I just paid my rent and I only have $20 left in my account. And my first paycheck for this new job that I just started, that doesn't come through until next week. And I'm running out of gas in the car that I need to use to get to work. If you're rich, stop talking. Okay, stay out of this. So earlier this week, slash last week, uh, we had an issue with our air conditioning. It wasn't making our house cooler. Um, and we don't live in a very like super huge, nice house or anything. It's just a small post-war house, whatever. Um, house is from the 50s. The air conditioning was replaced when we bought it in 2020. Come to find out that uh, we have to get the compressor replaced. Uh, the part is under warranty, thank God. Uh, and the company is going to send a new one or replace it or whatever. But we're still having to pay for the re replacement Freon and the, re the service to get it installed. And this is just a long line of bullshit we've had to deal with since we bought this house. I honestly don't understand why we bought this house. Like, I don't understand why I've been told since I was a kid that like, oh, being a homeowner is great. Yes, it is good to be able to paint your walls and hang up pictures. But you know what I'm not? like I, what's not okay is having to pay for a new fucking roof six months after you move in or replace twenty thousand dollars worth of plumbing or replace floors after four years did you know that your floors can go bad after four years that's some shitty fucking flooring four years i'm just i'm so done i'm so done with spending all of my money like okay i make good money like not like you know doctor money or something but like I have a bachelor of science degree oh and by the way there's all those student loans yeah like the entire art institute plethora of people get all of their loans forgiven because they're all department of education loans but no me who paid them off like 10 years ago I'm stuck with these huge rock of private loans so you know whatever it's just everybody has this issue right like it's not it's not unique to me everybody has fucking student loan issues like I can bitch about it till the cows come home, but it's still, I'm just so sick of working fucking so hard to get ahead and finally getting to that place. Like I have two jobs, right? I have two jobs where I work hard. I try to do my best. I actually enjoy both of my jobs. The problem is, is every time I get close to having a little bit of money to where I feel comfortable, like, and I'm not even talking like comfortable. Like I'm talking like I have two grand in my bank account. Oh my God. If I lost my job tomorrow, I could still pay my mortgage for a month. Like not a ton of money, but every time I get to that point, something happens. Oh, the dishwasher's rusty. What? We, our dishwasher's fucking four years old and it's rusty. How do you have a rusty dishwasher after four years old? Our floors, how do your floors go bad after four years? Air conditioner, four years old, compressor dies. Like, I don't understand how your luck can be this bad. Like, what did I do in a previous life? I'm just, like, so sick of this, getting to this point where, like, I've worked really hard and I've done what's right. You know, like I've, I, I'm not putting more money on a credit card. I'm not 
wasting my money, like shopping or whatever, like the few things that I do buy for myself, like I don't feel like it's that much, but lo and behold, I'm out of money again. I'm just so sick of it. I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of struggling. And it's not even like a super huge struggle. Like it's just the exhaustion I feel from fighting and figuring out shit and like worrying about money. Like I'm worried because we have to replace this compressor thing and that's going to be a chunk of money. Thank God the part's still under warranty because it's $1,300 without having to pay for the part. So what would I have done if I had to replace the whole thing? I would have had to take out another bill, paid like, you know, $90 a month or $50 a month or whatever, tightened our finances even more to be able to afford that. Like, I'm glad that we had the whatever two grand we had in our bank account, but like, it's already gone. Like, it's, it's gone. And the only way I got that was because I got like a bonus at work or because my income tax return came. Like I, I can save money in like tiny chunks, but then it gets eaten up. So how the fuck am I supposed to live as an adult person who's working? I don't get it. I know that this is a long rant. I know that this is just me yelling into the nothingness, like just out into the ether, but like, I'm just done, guys. Like, I, what is the point of this? Like, why are we doing this? Why am I paying for this house? Why am I paying for my student loans? Why am I just paying all this shit off when I'm not enjoying it? Like, the, 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 the tiny bit of enjoyment I get out of life, like, I don't feel like it's worth it. It's not worth it. That's just life, though, right? It's just life. I I know that this video isn't... It's nothing. Like, it's just me ranting. Just me ranting in my garage. Which will probably have to be replaced next year. Oh yeah, in my shitty ass driveway. Look at my shitty ass driveway out there. Can you see all those potholes? I don't know if you can see it. But it's fine. Whatever. It's just, you know, we knew that that was a piece of shit when we moved in. We bought this house. We didn't expect the $20,000 worth of plumbing we had to fix ourselves or the new roof or the new water heater or I don't know, whatever Timbuktu bullshit we had to replace. I'm just sick of it. I'm just so sick of it. I'm just so sick of it. I'm sorry. If you listened to this far, thank you. I hope you enjoy rants. You know this, I hate the money talk. I absolutely hate it, but I still want to get it off my chest. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Ashlyn. I am a paramedic. I'm a paramedic who recently got her own place. So now I'm paying rent and utilities and buying all of the stuff and things, including toilet bowl brush cleaners for this apartment. Did I know we got paid like crap? Yes, I've been aware of that for four years, but I did not realize hourly by minute by second how little we got paid until I started really crunching the numbers and seeing if I pick up this many shifts my rent is covered. I calculated everything out. I have three jobs if you didn't know. I work full-time, I work part-time at the college, and I have a part-time EMS job on another service. I calculated base pay for every single place, overtime, vacation time, sick time. If I pick up this many shifts at this job, I get paid more than if I pick up shifts at this job. It's insane. I've used Rocket Money for like four years straight. And if you don't know what Rocket Money is, it's a very, very, very basic app that basically tracks all of your transactions. It connects to your bank account, connects to your credit score. It just gives you more awareness about where your money goes. Been using it for four years straight and my golly, seeing actually where every single penny goes and how just how much I should be making infuriates me. You know, my paramedic instructor said something the other day that really, really opened my eyes as I'm thinking about all this money crap and how little we get paid. The paramedic students were really struggling to grasp a lot of topics and they're struggling because it's a lot of information you get thrown at at once. And she said, when you think about it, a paramedic has to be a cardiology, respiratory, and a neurology specialist all in one call. Whereas doctors, PAs, nurses, sometimes they're all specialty for one thing and one thing only. They go to that same job every single day. We're dealing with it all in one day. We have to know endocrine, neuro, cardiology, respiratory, ortho, pediatrics, and all the above 
in the same day. We have to remember everything about every single thing. Every call, every shift. I'm not saying we're magicians, but like paramagicians. But sitting back and thinking about like what we go through in paramedic school, what we go through in EMS, what we are trained to do, trained to learn, and expected to do on calls, and you're gonna tell me that I'm getting paid $19.50 an hour? My monthly income just base pay, maybe around three to four thousand dollars. I know people have so much worse. People have it way worse. I should be very thankful for the income that I have. It's really just crappy to think about when I sit back all of the crap that I am expected to know and I get a sandwich from the break room and four thousand dollars a month if I'm lucky because I have overtime. It's a little frustrating. But I have to end the video like this because people are gonna be like, oh my god, you're complaining so much, go get a different job. No. I don't do the job for the money, but sadly you have to have money to live. So no matter how much I can't stay in the money, I will always find a way to do my job because EMS is my passion. That is all. Have a good shift. When I tell you this was me, and I'm gonna give you some advice that pissed me clean off. Probably gonna piss you off, but you need to hear it. Before you go look at a budget, before you go look at getting a second job, before you go look and try and find a better job, whatever it might be, you need to heal your spiritual and mental relationship with money. Somewhere down the line during your childhood, part of your adulthood, your relationship with, with money was tainted probably because you were a child trying to navigate adult situations, dealing with child finances, handling adult financial issues. You've always had to be there for yourself financially and your relationship with money is just completely severed. And the issue that happens when you don't heal that is no matter what type of abundance comes into your life, no matter what type of extra money comes into your life, you will always mishandle it because you haven't done the work to change how you view it. And I know that it's so small and it does not help your situation currently, but I'm tell you, telling you it's going to help your situation down the line. Change your relationship, heal your relationship. I can recommend some audio books, some books that I read to get me through it, some scriptures that I read to get me through it. But you have to heal that because the mental and spiritual block is the biggest block that you can have when it comes to money. Because this money out here, it's money on the way to you, but you might just be blocking it because you don't believe that you can actually have it. Hey Raph, I'm a teacher and I can barely afford to pay rent with my salary. My salary bi-weekly is basically my rent minus $500. Guess how much my car is? $400. Guess how much insurance is? $100. Oh yeah, that's right. You do the math. I'm left with owing money at the end of the month. That's not even with groceries. <laughs> Holy sh That's not even with groceries. I realize every single month I am transferring money out of savings into my checking and I am not. Um, just had the realization in the car that I'm actually going to go into debt if I continue being a teacher. Like, genuinely. Genuinely. Um, wow. Oh, I'm like literally having a crisis right now. I'm really going to have a panic attack right now. I can't do this. I literally cannot do this. Knowing every single month that most of my money is literally, like, I don't have money. Okay. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to pay off my credit card this month. I don't know. All right. Well, rats, peace and blessings. And I hope you can afford your rent today and groceries and your car and insurance and life. Bye. <laughs>